You said, I'm all in. Were you really all in? Let me tell you what the cost of being all in is. Early mornings, late nights, being misunderstood, having very few friends, being your own cheerleader. Are you those things? All right, so we're going to try to get a little done. It is Saturday afternoon. The boys are off racing. Uh, me and the wife just finally got done sitting down eating for a second. Harper just went to bed. Uh, when I dropped my daughter off so i had my daughter over also uh for the weekend for harper's party and when i dropped her off back with her mama uh john just went live so them boys were just about to do a shakedown after i dropped her off so it's just it would have been it would have been too rushed for me to go to the track uh this afternoon to help them and i would have had to bail out on the family or feel like i was bailing out and as a father and a husband i try not to do that so i'm Bummed out I'm not at track this afternoon because believe it or not, I would love to have been there. Randy's new Randy's new setup is looking amazing. Uh, but I grabbed a bite to eat and I'm going to try to get a little bit done tonight. Don't know how much I can get done, but we got to torque this torque converter down. And I'm going to try to just get it bolted up to the engine. If I can do them two things by myself tonight, I'll be stoked. So I could not ever get back in touch with PTC on Friday. It was 3 o'clock. They would not answer the phone. Their stuff was just going in loops. I guess they closed. I don't know. Um, their website did not show their hours. So I asked in a Turbo 400 group what the, what everybody believes the torque specs was. Apologize that I couldn't get up with the company because I hate asking for people to help. I Googled it. I researched it. I tried to find the answer myself, but I don't want to mess up something like this. And so I asked for help, even though I don't like to do that normally, especially in Facebook groups. But it seems like the general... The numbers were hitting anywhere from 15 to 27 foot pounds, um, but it seemed. But some on the 27 were saying they're not 100% sure. One on the 15 foot pounds was saying that it'll do, but it seems like our common number is 20 to 25 foot pounds. Uh, somebody else commented 20 to 22 is what another guy at PTC told him on his torque converter. So we're gonna go with 20. I feel like a safe number is 20. I hate, hate, hate hate torquing stuff because I feel like I'm going to strip the threads out. I always do. Um, but we're going to try to get this thing torqued down because obviously we can't put it in there until we torque these bolts down. And if all that goes smooth, then I'm going to try to get some fluid in this thing and try to get the transmission back up and just bolt it to the block with at least two bolts this afternoon. So let's, let's get Let's grab it. our trusty, precise uh, Harbor Freight torque wrench. And we'll set up some settings and let's see if we can do this thing. So I really, really, really hate torquing stuff. So what I always do is, since I'm going for 20, we're gonna start low. So we're gonna start at like 10, and I wanna hear this thing click because I'm always afraid that the torque wrench is not working. And, um, let's see, I'm gonna start on this rusty one. That the torque wrench is not working, and I'm gonna strip a thread out. I always, I'm so paranoid. So I don't know if that was the click or not so faint haven't used this thing enough if you're doing like a low torque setting like is the click fainter than a high torque setting I guess kind of like that has to be that has to be the click just bump this thing up that was like 15, let's go a little past 20. Because we're shooting for 20 to 25. So let's just get, let's bury the line on 20. Yeah, that's gotta be it. Okay, so let's get a marker and mark that. First one we did, that one. You can also, I can feel and see the head moving on the torque wrench. Like you can see it finally give right there. I hate this. That should be that. Man, I hate this. Alright, 
So y'all, I'm gonna go around, torque all of these down. Uh, it's definitely working. And then we'll get some fluid in this bad boy. All right, so I don't have no filters here at the house. So we're gonna try it with some paper towels. Yes, we are putting back in the torque converter what come out of the torque converter. I'll probably receive some not so happy comments about this, but I don't care. That is not filtering through like water does. We're just gonna let the paper towel, since we don't have a filter, we're just gonna let the paper slowly put it back in there and let the paper towel catch any, hopefully any trash. This bucket was clean for the most part. So if anybody don't understand, I'm running the, the oil is running over the paper towel and then I've got a little tiny spot down in there for the oil to drain but any trash should get caught for the most part in the paper towel. This is probably not exactly something you would want to do yourself. This is probably not exactly something I should be doing. This is probably not good. But if you compare me to Randy and John, I'm pretty much right in between. <laughs> so people will say that I care about my car like Randy does. But then I'm on a budget like John. So I'll be reusing stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with this fluid. We're, go or we're already going to have to buy more anyway. I don't want to have to use no more than I have to. Stuff's over $100 for five gallons. And I'm not made of money. And yes, if you destroy the transmission or torque converter with trash in it, it's a lot more than 100 bucks. But... Um, that's the gamble you have to take if you want to be cheap and stupid. Well, she's in there. So, of course, the one thing I was hoping would not happen, happened, and that is when you put your transmission up in here, that your torque converter is not all the way pushed back. I had a hard time getting this thing to push back and I literally had it sat up in there, the first two bolts on each side, and it was too close to the flex plate. So I was able to thank the Lord, put a screwdriver in there, spin it a little bit and get it to set back. So now I have the proper setback on it and it's in there. I have two bolts in the bottom, one on each side. And um, that is all I'm gonna do for tonight. Uh, that was the biggest thing was being by yourself. I'm sure y'all, uh, know the feeling thank the lord i have ac because i couldn't imagine doing this thing in the dirt or the grass like back in the day when i was younger having to help people and uh doing this thing in the elements but um getting the torque converter to drop in the transmission when you're laying underneath the car the car is not up high enough to bring the transmission outside of the car uh it kind of stays in the tunnel unless i want to take transmission off the jack and the whole time i've left it on the jack because i'm using a normal floor jack to get this thing in and out of there so I didn't want to drop all that weight down to the concrete because then that's a bear to get that thing sat back up on top of the jack by yourself. And then trying to get the torque converter to drop in by yourself, balancing the transmission on the jack under the car is a bear by itself. And then to get it up, balancing it on the jack, set it in dowel pins, get it all in, get bolts in it. That's a whole nother thing. So I've overcome, I feel like the two worst or the worst stuff possible get this thing in it's in there it's got two bolts held in it jacks on it it's good for the night 
it's Sunday morning. Y'all ever just sit there and just stare at the car and just not want to do it? Man, I just do not want to get underneath there and hook this transmission back up. Like, I'm so, so, so dreading it. Uh, but we got the hard part in, as you've seen. So, I guess, uh, happy Sunday morning. Um, we're going to listen to Murder Nova and them ramble on TV about putting a big block in a Ford Bronco. And uh, I guess we are going to get the transmission in. Hooking the transmission up is not the issue. It's the starter. It's the dreaded starter on this car. Putting the starter back in. That is the thing that sucks. Let's get at it. it won't do itself. All right, so when you do these swaps, I've pretty much got the whole thing put back together. All we got left is the dreaded starter and the um, exhaust collectors. And you know, the only reason why the starter is hard on my swap is because of my very complicated, very tight fitting headers. So if you haven't checked that out, go back, check out some of our past videos uh, on the headers. Uh, you can see where we uh, picked this up from uh, BPF and Jason Braslow did all of the uh, header work. He did an amazing job. So we had a problem at Harold's when we first took this car back um, way at the beginning of this year, if you recall. We had to shim the starter out. So ever since then, I've been using these little washers. Now these are from Harbor Freight, or no, I'm sorry. These are from the Harbor Freight winch, uh, and they just happen to fit perfect and fix the issue. Um, so I was like, you know what? I was like, we need to get somebody to fab us a shim out of this with the pattern of the Ford Coyote starter. And so I measured these and then I went online and I was like, well, let's Google and see if there is any shims uh, in this size for let's just say maybe one of these starters even though I feel like shimming a starter is kind of older um, Thing is what I feel like newer a lot of newer vehicles. You just throw it in and go and it's good every single time um, Sure enough pops right up power by the hour has a Ford Coyote Shim starter kit and they explain in their ad that when you're using these aftermarket bell housings like that Often the tolerances are just a little bit off and you have to shim the starter so that explains the reason why we had the issues that we had with our starter. It's probably the reason why we burned out the first starter. Um, you know, and um, ever since we put these washers on there, it's it's been perfect. This was John's recommendation at the racetrack, fast fix to put these washers on. So I said, screw this. We, we're gonna battle with the washers today. We're gonna get this car together. Um, but I went ahead and ordered us uh, a kit uh, from Power by the Hour for the Coyote starter, the shim kit. So we'll never have to deal with individually three little things again. It's just one round circle, the shape of the starter that goes right in there and you're good to go. It's one piece slips in, be good to go. I uh, wish I had it today, but we're gonna fight through this. We're gonna get the starter back in and we gonna get the collectors put back on and then we should be able to get this car down and fire it off. Harper, what are we doing? Um, working on the race car. Working on the race car? Yeah. Okay, so we got it all back together. We got it down, uh, changed the pulley. Now we are using this cheap Harbor Freight hand pump to transfer over our fuel into here. If y'all use uh, VP 50, or if y'all use 55 gallon drums, let me know what you use budget friendly to get the fluid out of there into your race cans. I'm curious. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a pump really right now. I'm um, curious how long the batteries are lasting this little cheap thing. Um, it said don't use it for fuel, but I think we'll be okay. It'll definitely get us through now. Y'all drop a link or tell me the product that y'all use. Don't hit me with that. What is that? Is that your wire? Yeah. Whose birthday was it this weekend? Mine. It was your birthday? Yeah. How old are you? Um, three. three? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Okay. Blow it out. out. Good oh, job. Yeah. Cool deal. All right, so we're gonna get some race fuel in here and get ready for our next outing. So we got all of our ducks in a row. All right, so I have no clue if this thing is gonna fire up. We've got the, oh man. We've got the, uh, one of the, the blow off valve pipe off of it, but I would think that it would still, um, maybe fire, I don't know. Battery's pretty low. Alright, so we got 
board and reverse gears. That's all I wanted to check. So just to make sure there was there. the fluid should be low in the trans. Um, that should have filled up the converter. So we're going to have to uh, check that later on. And I also ordered a different dipstick again. Uh, I'm going to change out that I want to show y'all. So uh, stay tuned because we're going to get this thing back out testing. I got to leave my garage open now because it stinks in here. Now I'm going to fire this thing off and I pumped all this fuel over. We're going to let this garage air out for us this afternoon. But uh, that should make y'all happy. She's back running. All I got left is literally this uh, charge pipe or the sear. That's the hot side, I guess you can call it. Um, I don't have the hole saw for this, so the correct one. So I got to get a two inch hole saw, grab that, cut that out, bolt that on, uh, order the T connector to tie these two together and plumb the little vacuum lines on that. And then we are, we're good to go, ready to go back to track uh, as soon as there is a, another available um, testing. Uh, blower belt on it, it's a back on it, pulley is set up. So we are, we're back, we're back ready to go pretty much y'all. Make sure you stay tuned because of course y'all are gonna see when this thing goes back to the track and we go testing it and hopefully we can run some numbers. Uh, before that though, we might be going to TKM. So make sure you stay tuned because we might be about to lay down some numbers on the dyno and get this thing back right with Kevin.